What's up guys, Dotto here. Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day because I am starting a motorcycle build series right here and I'm taking you guys along for the ride. So sit back, relax, grab a drink and enjoy. So I've always wanted to do a motorcycle build series on my channel and document everything start to finish, take you guys along for the ride and show you a little bit of the customization and fabrication work that I do. Unfortunately, with some of the other bike builds that I have in here, I didn't document everything from the beginning. So this is a fresh build. It's actually right behind the camera. I'm super excited to take you guys along for the ride. So without further ado, here it is. Today, I am embarking on a small adventure. I found a really interesting motorcycle on the marketplace and I decided to go check it out. So I am packing all my stuff, getting the trailer ready, and I'm gonna hit the road. As some of you know, I own a 1965 BSA Lightning uh, 650 and uh, you know, owning a, a really old motorcycle is neat because it's very rudimentary, not many electronics, if any, just like turn signals and uh, headlight and taillight pretty much, and a horn. Um, I've always wanted uh, a Triumph. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with something really old like my BSA. There is uh, benefits and downfalls of having a really old motorcycle. Um, but I found this uh, Triumph T100, it's a 2007 model, and uh, it appears that it has been sitting for a while. It uh, has some scratches and things like that on it. I'm assuming that the chain and tires are going to need serviced or replaced, and um, it's got some other issues. It says the carburetors need cleaned, and which is typical from it uh, sitting and not starting battery's probably going to need replaced and there is also a uh, fitting on the oil cooler that it appears that it uh, that it needs replaced something's wrong with it I'm, it's really tough to tell I, I'm headed over there now it's gonna be a little bit of a drive for me and I'm really hoping that I get to check this out and make an offer there is another individual that's meeting them there at the same time as I am so I'm really kind of hoping that they flake or, you know, I make an offer before they do. All right, guys, there it is. Uh, the Triumph Bonneville decided to buy it. Um, it's going to need some work, but, uh, you know, it was a nice day. The other guy didn't show up on time, so uh, we decided to uh, pick it up. So we're just going to do the transaction really quick. I'll load it up on the trailer, and then I'll do some filming when we get back to the shop. Thank you so much for the, for the sale today. I appreciate it. See you guys soon. And here it is guys, Triumph Bonneville T100. This build is going to be something special. I'm super excited, let's get started. Some of the things that I noticed right away whenever I went to look at the bike was uh, the wear and tear items. Obviously the tires need replaced. They're quite old and dry. The chain is in awful shape and so are the sprockets. So that's gonna need address. Now in the for sale ad, he had mentioned that it needs a replacement oil cooler because this fitting right here is actually broken. He tried to take the fitting off for some reason and as you can tell, it was cracked. It's at an angle, it should be straight, and it cracked right here. And uh, so that whole unit needs replaced. With that being said, I couldn't really start the bike up. Um, he also said there's no gas in it, and um, the battery was dead, and the carbs probably need rebuilt. So I'm kind of taking a chance on the whole deal, especially because uh, this is pulled up. Also, another concern for me was seeing the oil all over this case right here. 
Uh, looks like the oil was blowing out and that's a clear indication that there's too much oil in the crankcase or there's a um, or there's a reason that this case is leaking. Sometimes the gasket fails, but that's not very common if it, they do, they're down here. Um, so the next thing I looked at was the oil, and lo and behold, it's got way too much oil in the crankcase. Inside of the fuel tank is definitely gonna need some attention. This has, um, I'm not sure if somebody tried coating the inside of the fuel tank, but uh, it's a little bit crusty in there. So I gotta address that as well. I did charge up the battery and it does crank over, which is a great sign. You might be wondering why did I choose to do a Triumph build and why not a sports bike? One attractive thing about these motorcycles is they're very comfortable and very fun to ride around town and even back roads. And this is what I wanted to build a bike for. However, my vision is a little bit different than what you see the bike looking at as now. Let me post a photo and show you my motivation picture. I'm driving about an hour away in order to pick up a set of Suzuki GSXR 1000 uh, forks, front suspension, the calipers for the brakes, some rotors, and uh, I'm picking all this stuff up in order to do a whole front end conversion on this Triumph. It's a nice day out today, and I uh, decided why not. So I stopped and got some food at this amazing food truck it's called Taco Trap House, and it's some authentic uh, tacos, and doesn't that look phenomenal? I'm a fat kid, I'm always hungry, and I love to eat. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you the truck right there. There you go, Taco Trap House. All right guys, I'm back in the garage, and I unloaded the parts, and here's what we got. Uh, the Jixxer 1000 forks, I love the fact that they're gold, and these ones are black down here. And uh, he left the fender and the lower tree and even the um, steering stabilizer on there. He also hooked me up with two different sets of rotors. They both bolt on to the factory hub. However, these ones are a little bit uh, taller. There's more braking surface. And this is a more of like an OEM um, type set. This one has some wear on the inner part there uh, where it was painted. And if I end up using those, I'll clean that up and polish it. But I really like the look of these. And <clears throat> um, these calipers, these Tokiko calipers for both of the fronts, left and right side. And uh, obviously, I'll be getting new uh, brake pads for that. So, so I mean, they're in, the forks are inverted. So you can actually, these ones are upside down versus the Triumph ones, but you can definitely tell the difference. Way beefier. Um, the rotor, this one only has uh, one rotor on the left hand side and um, we're going to have uh, two rotors, one on each side with the new setup. Much beefier, much nicer suspension here and they're inverted and they look way nicer than these do. On these factory units the shocks are very small and uh, you only get one brake rotor in the front and a tiny little caliper and I don't think that's gonna fly for this build. I get the inverted forks, very nice suspension, dual calipers, big rotors, and a new set of brake pads with that as well. Now the triple trees and the stem I cannot reuse. I have to have a custom set of uh, conversion front end components made and uh, kind of have that taken care of as well. Okay, in order to make the GSXR front end work with this setup on the Triumph, we need some key components. So the only thing that I can really use here from this is the inverted gold forks, the calipers, the rotors, and the axle. Everything else has to be custom made. I want this build to be special, so I reached out to our friends at Cognito Moto, ordered the top and bottom triples, the steering stem, Cognito Moto is also custom making me a front wheel uh, that's going to be laced with a matte barrel, which is going to look really sick, and it's also going to completely pulled up to the front end of this uh, unit once it's on there. In order to have a rear matching wheel to the front, I decided I'm going to have Cognito Moto build me a rear wheel as well. However, they will need this hub from me. First step in this process is to remove the entire rear wheel and tire, take the tire off, take all the spokes out take the brake rotor off, the sprocket, all that stuff, remove the bearings. I'm gonna have a friend of mine powder coat this matte black to match 
the new wheel setup and then I will ship this hub out to Cognito and have them do their magic. I will have a front and rear wheel matching complete for this bike and they're going to be three and a half inches wide which will allow me to run some badass tires. I'll show you those next. If you've seen my videos on my Ducati Scrambler build, I use these Continental Twin Duro tires. Uh, this just happens to be a rear tire in the front because I really wanted the wide profile and uh, these really work well. All right, here's the Twin Duro tires. They actually don't look as big uh, until they're mounted and uh, get some air in there, but you can definitely tell that they are the same tire as I'm running on the uh, Ducati. That should give you a little taste of uh, what those tires are gonna look like on there. The size that I'm using for the front and rear is 130, 80, 17. I decided to go with 17 inch front and rear wheels, three and a half inch wide, and the 130, 80 is gonna be perfect for that. These are TKC 80 twin duros. This is what I'm running on my Ducati as well. Even though these are tubeless tires, they're going on laced wheels, and as you know, um, sometimes they leak because there is a gap between the spoke and the rim itself. Typically, you shouldn't have a problem. However, we are going to be running some tubes because that is what's suggested. I purchased these inner tubes from Bike Master. They sell this performance tube. Essentially, it's just a, a heavy duty inner tube. Um, and then the size that we need is um, listed right here. Now, how you read this is, this is three and a quarter up to three and a half inch wide, 17 inch wheel. And then um, this style has the stem in the center. Uh, it's not offset and those are the things you want to watch for a lot of you ask me well you know how do you get those tires and tubes to work together those are the things you have to look at okay i did buy four instead of two of each because you know how it is if a tube goes bad or is or is bad from factory i don't want to have to wait for shipping and then i also have extras and in order to run that you need bands these bands fit on your wheel and they uh, protect the spokes from poking this and also kind of seal up the inside of the wheel before you put the tube in there. I got four of those as well because I don't like taking risks and I like having extras. So there's that. Next up is the chain and sprockets. Now, I decided to stay with stock gearing for now until the bike is, you know, running and driving for a while and then I can play with gearing. So these are factory uh, sized. However, I did get the 520 conversion. It is a lot lighter and smaller and thinner. Um, and there's a lot less rotating mass. I decided to go with Superlight. They're an awesome company and I ordered all these components from them. I got a, a rear uh, black sprocket and a really nice looking front sprocket. I don't think these come in black. They will both be exposed. Uh, I'm using a RK520 chain and I got that in gold. I think gold is gonna look really nice against all the black components in black bike. And I also decided to go with um, black nuts that hold this rear sprocket on because I just think silver on this will look like crap. These on motorcycles and I did get the black dial ones. So let's check these out. The fit, the machining, and the, they're gonna look really nice on a motorcycle. Um, and I got these to fit the Triumph. You also have to think I have a Jigsaw front end now going on there, so you have to watch which components you order, and I'll tell you why I ordered uh, these for the Triumph itself. So on this build, I decided to stay with a bar, uh, which is also customizable. I will be getting it in black, but I am staying with the one inch bar. The Jigsaw front end, all the components and controls are seven eighths. This is a one inch, so nothing is just bolt on and compatible. And you might be wondering, well, how are you gonna make it work with the triple trees? Cognito Moto actually makes top triples that have this clamp here in whatever size you need. And I told them I want a black riser and a black clamp um, that's gonna look really nice with the build. And they're also sending me, uh, I believe they're sending me Biltwell uh, bars that are black. It's gonna look super nice. And the reason I stayed with one inch is this. So uh, all the electronics, all the levers, the clamp on, uh, the master, and also all the electrical stuff on this side and uh, the grips, they're all one inch. In order for me to swap everything over to seven eighths, I would either have to do clip-ons that are seven eighths, which I'm not doing, or I'd have to do a seven eighths bar, I would have to get the seven eighths riser. Um, and then all these components would have to be completely removed and rewired. And I'd have to get new master cylinder and, and clutch lever and everything that fits a seven eighths bar, including grips. And the issue with that is, 
uh, I would essentially have to redo the entire bike. And although that's not hard for me to do, it's very time consuming and uh, just swapping over the one inch components will work for now. Now the next component that I ordered is this liquid filled uh, oil temp gauge made by New Bonneville. It's a black machined oil temp gauge and it actually just replaces this oil fill cap right here. Now this is chrome and it's ugly and it's rusted and I'm gonna be replacing it with this gauge in order to keep an eye on the oil temps. So I think that's gonna look really nice in there. Next up is a replacement oil cooler. Now, these coolers are super expensive if you were to buy them new. I found one that's in really great shape. It's actually off of a newer Bonneville and I did not confirm uh, prior to ordering that the fitment is exact. However, all the mounting points, the sizes of the banjo fittings and everything else seems to be correct. Most of the other components that I have for the build are being made as we speak. A lot of the CNC parts, custom made things like the wheels and the triples and stuff like that. Uh, I already paid for and they are being made at Cognito Moto. I spoke with the guys over there and they are absolutely phenomenal. If you guys are doing a custom build and you're ordering something from their site, give them a call. They answer, uh, they reply to emails and they're very helpful. That's pretty much it for the build plans as of right now. Things may change along the way. If you guys have any suggestions, it's going to be an interesting experience because I've never built a Bonneville to this extent before and I think it's going to be an awesome bike to cruise around on and it'll look badass as well. If you want to support, hop on over to www.dottomadeshop.com uh, where you can find cocktail smokers, whiskey and cigar stuff, and uh, things like this. It's an insulated tumbler, Dotto Made Garage. All of these are available for purchase on my website, so please go over there and support if you can.